Raghunath, are you ready for this? What? The wisdom of the sages' trainings that are going on. Where? At the Eco Village, the, the Govardhan Eco Village in India. Why? To totally transform your life spiritually. Who? Who? You, me, Radha Swami's gonna be there, other great teachers are gonna be there, lots of cool people. How? You go to wisdomofthesages.com slash events. You find all the information there. Hadi Bo. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya From Ormond Beach, Florida, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and Kostubas on break today. I'm here with Mara filling in, and we have a special guest today is um, uh, uh, in interview day. But before we get to our very special guest, Mara, good morning. How are you? Any announcements there today? Good morning. I'm well, and I do have announcements. Um, we have a back to your recovery group meeting today at 930 a.m. Eastern time. There's no show tomorrow since you're getting in late tonight. Mm. Um, but there is still Zeb's asana class for our Patreon members will be tomorrow at 4 p.m. And then we have our Bhakti Recovery Group meeting, our Bhakti Recovery Retreat coming up at Super Soul Farm October 4th through 7th. And then right after that is the Wisdom of the Sages Retreat. Woohoo! Yeah. What's the date of that? That's like the 8th, 9th, and 10th, I think. 7th through 9th, I think. 7th through 9th. Okay, great. Yeah. And we'll that's on wisdomofthesages.com if people want to sign up or find out more info. Yeah, coming up. It's a great time of year to be in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. Also, January, we're all going to Radna Swami's Retreat Center in uh, three hours north of Mumbai. Incredible place, cutting edge. We have three great courses going on. One, our Kirtan Academy. Study and learn Kirtan. Add Kirtan to your classes or use it as a meditational practice. Then we have our Wisdom of the Sages Retreat. That's too long. You can actually do both of those because they're back to back. And going through all both, both of those is our Bhakti Cultural Immersion 300-hour yoga teacher training. Come join us in January. Get out of the cold and go to uh, wisdomofthesages.com under events. So we have a special guest today, and I'm really excited. Please welcome Guru Das. Guru Das Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Welcome to the show. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Prabhu, I'm so excited to have you on the show. And um, I had the very good fortune of being with Yamuna Devi um, for over a month um, when she was staying in Washington, D.C. when I was a brahmachari. And um, it was quite an amazing uh, situation because Henry, one of our regular Zoomers, she was, her and Dina Tarane were living with Henry. Um, and Henry had a big, ha had a big house. So he would like to host devotees. And um, I was in our, our band shelter and we were trying to write a record and Henry understood sort of the, how complication, complicated it was to write a, a, a record living in the ashram. So we invited our, all the brahmacharis to come stay at his house. And so when we got there, he said, well, we have some guests here. I hope you don't mind. Yamuna Devi and Dina Tarane are staying with me and they're working on her new cookbook. And I was like, you're kidding. The Yamuna Devi is here at the house. And then she greeted us and welcomed us. And she said, I hope you don't mind that I'll be cooking for you because I'm working on new recipes. And it was sort of like a Harry Krishna dream come true. And every morning she would lead us through the morning program and give us class on the Bhagavad Gita or the Bhagavatam. And it, it was quite amazing. And she'd invite people over. Makunda Maharaj would come over and um, Kim Murray would come over. And so it was just one incredible experience. And one of the big things that I remember telling her was, um, I, I confided in her, I'll, I'll share it with you now, um, that these stories of Prabhupada um, coming out uh, of Prabhupada leading a massive society all over the world, I said, you know, I felt really intimidated. It's, it's embarrassing to admit, but I felt very intimidated as Prabhupada as this sort of like a general. And she felt, she said, you know, Raghu, I actually feel the same way because I didn't know Prabhupada as a general. 
he was for the early devotees, he was like a friend to us. And of course, he was our guru. He taught us everything, but he was more like a friend. And that relationship with Yamuna and Mukunda Maharaj back then for me helped me develop a relationship with Prabhupada, you know, my Param guru, my guru's guru. And you were one of those devotees who really had this relationship with Prabhupada when he came and he was really unknown. And I'm curious to know, like, how did you stumble upon Prabhupada, this Swami in, in, you know, in these hippie neighborhoods of the United States? What was your first meeting like? What turned you on and what made you realize this person is my spiritual master? Well, I first want to acknowledge you. We're all here because of Prabhupada. Scientifically, objectively, I wouldn't know you. You wouldn't know me. He gathered us all together, <clears throat> coming on the ship, Jaladuta, having heart seizures, per persevering alone, little money, wanting to go back to India, persevering. And finally, Krishna sent him young boys and girls like us. And like you, I want to acknowledge we first met Raghunath and I first met in Los Angeles. And then we went, Radhanath Swami said, come with me, we're going to go to a party. And we went to the, a party at <laughs> one of the richest, richest men in India. And it had theme parks. And at his house, there was the, was at theme. his house. And, uh, there was a movie star there. Um, and I have a photo of Raghunath showing his tattoo to the young Birla who had a Shiva tattoo. <laughs> and then we met at the Echo Village uh, that you mentioned, a wonderful place, award-winning place. It's a positive alternity, uh, alternative to the the needs of the world, a, a self-sustaining, blissful oasis in the middle of this world of nations and duality. And there you were holding your classes and I was honored to uh, address the graduating class. And I still have some friends from that that email me. Oh, wow. And that's the point of this. You greeted everybody. That's personalism. Vashnava love is hearing without judgment, confidentially hearing somebody, and they speak their mind. Mm -hmm. And that's the many devotees actually reach that pinnacle of personalism. But in a fishbowl community organization movement, some people don't feel comfortable. And that's why also the fact that you're doing a recovery group is wonderful because devotees need to talk to one another. And the fact that you're combining Hatha yoga and Bhakti yoga, a beautiful marriage. And this is the evolution, like a ripple from Prabhupada. New books, new films, this podcast, carrying on. So now, I'll tell you the answer to your question. I'll try to. So, it was the 60s, and the it was very hedonistic, free love, free, free drugs, free communes. 
and in comes the Swami. <clears throat> and why would I want to follow a man who's 71 years old and telling me not to have any fun anymore? <laughs> See, and that's another thing. He has such a sense of humor. And because I do, that was one of our interaction. I'll probably share some of the humor. So now we're a family, we're growing. There's, uh, there's less than 10 devotees and we're building. And, we, and because we were studying various Eastern mo models of spirituality, including Native American, I was searching and eclectic, but we thought, oh, India. If if a kurta came from India, it's oh, it's 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 spiritual, exotic. It, well, that's Krishna consciousness. Peacocks, Radha, Krishna, exotic incense, prashadam, music, dancing, not some vindictive patriarchal God looking down and telling what your sins are, like the Judeo-Christian model. We have a great personal alternative. So, so now we have the Swami. Jamuna comes back from her sister's wedding. And she fell in love with him. Not at first. Mm. As you know, Jamuna's a great cook. Sure. So Prabhupada taught her to cook. She was a great cook before when we lived together. We were boyfriend, girlfriend. It wasn't arranged. So that makes it even stronger. So she touched her shoulder. And so Swamiji at the time said, go wash your hands. So uh, then she said, Swamiji, can I go smoke a cigarette? And he said, go wash your hands. <laughs> then she tasted the prashadam. 99.99% of people who cook taste it. So the Swamiji says, we don't taste when we do prashadam. She thought that's very weird. And he said, go wash your hands again. She thought it was the first mantra. <laughs> But by the time she came back to San Francisco, she was raving about the Swami. Wow. Because he makes everybody feel comfortable. He looks into everybody's heart and satisfies the variegated people from Vietnam War devotees to heroin mm. addicts to all the different personalities. Everyone thought, oh, I have a special relationship with Prabhupada. And they did. Mm. Like... Krishna with the gopis at the Rasa dance. Each gopi thought, oh, I have this special relationship. Mm -hmm. So we had the Swami from India, and he was everything we wanted. He was jolly. He was kind. He was our father figure. And he was teaching us everything from accounting to cooking to some new prayers on the chalkboard. There was no movement. One temple no a one book mimeograph back to godheads not printed mimeographed it's an ancient form of printing <laughs> mimeograph that is a retro <laughs> word isn't it <laughs> yes and we did everything before fax and all of that the whole movement snail mail that I is said, actually unbelievable I said, that's I said, unbelievable i said to Prabhupada, when telex came out before fact we should have a telex at every temple of the world for communication and he said yes it's a good idea but also they may just gossip on it wow he, see he, was... he knew about social media before it came on it's, the tool is whether you use it like a scalpel or a or a murder weapon it's how you choose to use choice mm. so we had the Swami, and he was jolly and teaching us. Now, we didn't see him at first. He was translating. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, we would do kirtan at the early hour of 7 in the morning. 
and they were wild kirtans. Wow. Kettle drums and kelp horns and <laughs> we didn't have books. He was spoon feeding us. We didn't know who Lord Chaitanya was at first. And and here he was. There was no Vyasa son. He sat on the altar. And he had to, he was making bra- barbarians into Brahmins. <laughs> Haridas from New York painted the Pacha Tatwa. He thought they were topless women. <laughs> so Prabhupada came in, he's going, ah. <laughs> he called Haridas over and told him, these are men. So then the painting was taken off the altar and it was changed. That's the whole point. Next door to us was the Hell's Angels and the Diggers. Diggers was a charitable, we both fed people. Hmm. It was a hippie organization. This is San Francisco or New York? San Francisco. So I hear banging on the wall. Uh, Prabhupada, wonderful kirtans. So then it stopped and we heard banging on the wall. So Prabhupada gestures me over. Why me? There are so many devotees now. Kamal Krishna, he could... Prabhupada calls me over and says, Guru Das, what is that banging? And I said, I think it's the neighbors. He said, go see. So I bang on, I knock on the door. I've got a bead bag. The guy that answers has a stiletto. I have my car tells he's got a motorcycle. He's got a swastika etched in his cheek and born to lose cat two on his arm. Yeah, what do you want? Well, I said, in essence, could you party less hardy? In <laughs> essence. So I said, the Swami is about to speak. And could you please... Um, not bang on the wall. He said, I was I was banging on the wall, man, because of your singing. <laughs> You're singing, man. So there's an old jazz term, knock yourself out, but I didn't say it. <laughs> so I said, okay, the Swami's going to speak now. Well, he said, okay, we respect your Swami. And Ken Kesey, said that your Swami is heavy, which was a term meaning deep. Hmm. And I said, interesting that you use that term, Ken, because one of the translations for guru is heavy. Right. So then he said, heavy. So the, everybody loved Prabhupada because he was, he was the Swami for the hippies and he called us happies. So <laughs> there we were. And now we had the Swami, but then we realized we did want wisdom, but he really was on top of the mountain, seeing us climb up and he can really give us something. And he then uh, identified, he said, I've given you something tangible, the Vedic culture. Hmm. So I was having a nice life, hedonistic, but since I was in the civil rights movement down south of the United States, getting beaten and put in jail, since then I didn't have meaning and purpose in my life, especially purpose for other people. Mm. This is one of the principles that Prabhupada first gave us, prashadam, kirtan, but Das Anu Das. That means to serve each other. Now, this concept can, serve, can save the world. If everybody shared and wanted the success of each other, there would be no war. And we see it so nicely in our Krishna consciousness. The service attitude that we really do want the success of other devotees and we're glorifying 
And then Prabhupada gave an adage, if we do things together, census decision, <clears throat> then uh, if there's success, everyone is glorified. And if there's failure, no one is to blame. You see, it's like the arrow. One arrow can be broken, but the sheaf of arrows can't. The strength of numbers. Mm. And that's what's so beautiful about this spiritual family. It goes on and there's children. And you're, I have a really nice photo of your son at the Pushpa Abhishek. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm going to find those photos and send them to you. I would love that. I would love the picture of a, at that party. It was, it, was a, it, it was an incredible party. I think that was the, uh, yeah, it was the Bir Birla's daughter's birthday, three-year-old right. birthday. And they decorated the entire mansion to look like um, Kailash. And so there was like statues of Shiva and caves. And uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a weird cross between like a Hollywood party meets a Krishna conscious party. And I think yeah, that's sort it of was. like <laughs> it was like a carnival, but then they had someone demonstrating how to make uh, clay pots. <laughs> and that's the thing about India. The clay pots are then thrown back into the ground and that's recycled. Uh, there are many systems work with the recycling, replanting, everything like this. And this is something we can contribute to the world. So now Prabhupada's, again, there's no cartels, no mandanga. He played a bongo drum. Yeah, it's amazing. All, all your kirtans were just done with like any instrument. No one knew even know how to play the mandanga, even when they got the mandanga. There was no mandanga Right, players. and then Prabhupada taught Gigi Jata, Gigi Jata, taught Makunda, who's a great mandanga, teaching us everything, how to account. Accounting means put it down. Uh, immediately we're mm -hmm. looking at some art in Navadram. uh we uh art means full belly no one can appreciate this art this showing you this wisdom of Prabhupada and how he conveyed it no one can appreciate this art if they're starving mm. and if there's no one can appreciate appreciate krishna consciousness if they're surviving so feed everyone wow. so this is one of our concepts prashadam it's just brilliant and Prabhupada was giving prashadam all the time and teaching us how to cook now the other thing Prabhupada was present and so jamun was doing calligraphy I had a photo studio in New York with some people. It was an uh, acting and photo studio. And uh, so I was doing photography and, and, and the Swami was like a little boy. When he saw the camera, he felt this, how mm. heavy it was. And I showed him the light meter. And for 20 minutes, he was watching the needle go like that, like a little boy. <laughs> He used to play a game with little Kishori. She would run to him and he would tussle her hair and then she would laugh and run back and she would run to him and she would tussle her hair. It was like German, like a golden retrievers. When is this game going to stop? They would do it for half an hour giggling and he had all these facets and he made everyone feel comfortable. Mm because he could see inside their heart. I met Mother Teresa twice. She would look into the soul. The body is just the changing casing. Mm. And Prabhupada would look into the soul. So he encouraged my photography. And okay. it was an art because like he'd asked me to deal with the hell's angels, but, and then I'd have to be invisible and run up the hill and do the Rathiatra and then be with him again. And then he's talking with me and then he's talking to somebody else. And then I would snap the photo. So that was uh, a service I did. And I'm going to tell you two stories to give you an idea of Prabhupada. Uh, in Vishakapatnam, we were there 
we went to Madra Madras. Uh, we met the vice president of India, S.S. Radhakrishnan, and then we're riding in the train. It's a beachfront ashram. And I was chanting in the temple and Prabhupada walked every morning, the same time you could set your watch by his regulation. He said, regulation is preventative disease, another adage. Huh. Regulation is preventative disease. I like that. Mary. Yeah, what do you another think? Ad, just like art means full belly and accounting means put it down immediately. So <laughs> he was walking down to the beach with some devotees and I used to walk with them all the time. And then in London, I let everybody else walk. But then Prabhupada said, are you not coming, Gurudas? He made me, he took me everywhere. Wow. To Lalit Prashad, me, Samashunda, and Yadabara. Why me? There's so many. At any rate, so I chased after Prabhupada and, and I didn't take my shoes. In India, here's a tip, folks. Put one shoe on one side of the temple and one shoe on the other side of the temple because monkeys or people don't steal one shoe. <laughs> You are very wise. You are a very yes. wise man, Guru Das. Years of practicing in bhakti, this, this, this great uh, wisdom has been downloaded another, to you. Separate uh, your yes. shoes. Another uh, adage of uh, thinking about society and personalities. Prabhupada said, empty bowl makes, makes the most sound. Full bowl is silent. Hmm. Meaning some people crow their egoism, but a person who's self-satisfied within can be silent. And that quiet time is important to balance out. And also pranayama with hatha yoga. So anyway, I chase after Prabhupada and there's barnacles and he sees me walking gingerly and he said, there is enough tapasya, austerities in the world, that we don't have to do anymore unnecessarily. Hmm. Because some yogis beat themselves in pain and do different. Literally and uh, figuratively. Yes. Now, that's a good point. Figuratively. We have to appreciate who we are. Chinta Beta Beta Tatwa. We all, each have a unique relationship with Krishna. Mm. So gurus may inspire you, but Krishna doesn't want an army of automaton robots. Hari Bol Prabhu with no real conversation, as I was saying. He wants you with mm. your trying your best. He'll accept you. Prabhupada said to me one time, teasing me, if you do something and I don't forgive you, Krishna will forgive you. And if Krishna doesn't, Radharani will. Wow. Radharani is the soul of compassion. And so Prabhupada said, there's enough tapasya in the world that you don't have to do any unnecessarily things to yourself there's enough to deal with. And that's one of the points I wanted to make, that of all the qualities of Prabhupada, compassion stands out. And any spirituality, you may do all the rituals. The Dalai Lama said this, my religion is compassion. You can do everything, but if you don't love each other, love and trust, it's not all there. We're mm. personalists. So because Prabhupada shows such compassion, he instructed us, but he forgave us. Just like when Malati stole the butter, Malati was got us the stove from Jerry Garcia, because Wait, what? it can make what your body. What happened? She was like the one who could per, 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 get things. 
So she got Jerry Garcia to give us a stove that had to make chapatis. We had our rolls. <laughs> Once we had the stove, Harsharani was the rule enforcer. In fact, Jamuna proposed to me, I had a little hidden place in Golden Gate Park and I was reading the Bhagavad Gita Penguin edition. She comes into the hidden grove with the most unromantic proposal of all time, Harsharani says that if we live together, we have to get married. Oh. <laughs> so then showing your Harsharani in this interaction with Prabhupada. So now Prabhupada's teaching us the basics of Krishna consciousness about cooking, not touching. He goes into the kitchen and there's some new pakoras cooling. And the aroma was there. And Prabhupada takes one and pops it into his mouth. And he didn't touch his lips. He had he throwed it in a rainbow arc. How he did that. We tried to do it. <laughs> Vishnu, John, and I, and it pop off our mouth. Tamal and I, he'd do it and get into his lotus mouth. At any rate. So he takes a pakura and Karsharani says, You can't do that. His answer was he took another bakura and threw it into his mouth. She said, when we cook, we can't taste, we can't touch. He said, who is giving you these rules? She said, you have. He said, so I can break them and you threw another bakura. <laughs> so now it's the India-Pakistan war. Oh, wow. And everybody was, we were living in a dharmshala and at night you blacken the windows so the airplanes don't come and, and see the lights and bomb. What year was this and where were you? New Delhi, 70 something. I met two ministers who knew about the war before it started, months before. Mm. I, I invited the defense minister. Okay. I got to get back to the other story. But uh, I have to show you the essence of things in India. I We had a pandal, a tent program. And I, I first did it in... in Conway Hall in, in England, I made the titles of, of two weeks of talks and Prabhupada added a few. So this people, time we were invited. If people don't know, I was going to say a pandal is in India where they build these, they put out these massive, almost like you'd have a wedding tent and then a holy person would come and speak. And this is very, very popular in Indian culture. Indians come and just listen for days. There's food. And there's kirtan and there's talking. So it's very common. So Prabhupada, you're saying you set up these ones for Prabhupada? Yeah, we did first one in Calcutta. Mm. And this this was during the wartime too, the Naxalites. And they were attacking. We had some seats for people who didn't want to sit on the ground for one rupee. And they were saying communism there shouldn't be social difference. And they were, they said to a note, quit or die, they threatened us. And there was a, there was a person in the conversation, in the congregation who was a general and he was gonna fight them all and Prabhupada just sang the Brahma Samhita prayers and told me to tell them they can sit in the seats. So then they didn't have anything to, rebel against he calmed them hmm. so that was the first tent program like a circus so then we had one in delhi and I, my idea was to invite the poet laureate the movie star the ambassador from canada came so i got i met indira gandhi twice oh wow this and you can do this in india it's much different if i so now I went with Tamal Krishna, who was kind of a devotee who got things done and he, he had a tough side. So 
I wanted to ask the Minister of Defense to come to our Pondal gathering. So early in the morning, about 6.30, we go there and there's a guard with a bayonet and a rifle. And so our plan was that we, if there was a guard, we would split. So the guard chased Tamal, and I'm sitting <laughs> there with the defense minister in his pajamas at seven in the morning. And Indira Gandhi said the same thing to me when I invited her, we're a secular government. And if we came to your uh, religious gathering, everyone, and there's a thousand religions in every town in India, and, I, and, and we're a secular state. And I said, but we're a way of life. So the defense minister gave me the same spiel same thing, secular, but I saw a painting of his mother with her hand in a Joppa bag. Mm. So I said to the defense minister, if you don't come to our pondo, I'm going to tell your mother on you. <laughs> and he started shaking. And he said, <laughs> okay, I'll come. Uh, so now we're there in the war and Prabhupada didn't cover the windows and some uh, ad hoc committee came to him and said and we were a team when people came I made sure they had water and prashadam and they were seated and we were doing this together for years him and I Prabhupada and I mm -hmm. so they're there comfortable and they said Swamiji why aren't you covering your windows and Prabhupada said we're not the controller if Krishna wants to kill us, we'll, that'll be there. And if Krishna wants to save us, he'll save us. And he went on. You can't even control your toothache, your stomach ache. Mm. They said, but Swamiji, what if the bomb should come? Swamiji, what if the bomb should come? And I was standing up, making sure they had water. And, I, and Prabhupada looks up and he said, then I, then I will see the bomb as Krishna. <laughs> the Lakota Native Americans say it's a good day to die, which means use every moment preciously. Mm. And so this idea of compassion should permeate our Krishna consciousness because on top of the water, there's the agitation of material, dualistic challenges in our life. Arjuna on the battlefield. These kind of things, dark nights of the soul, Yoga of the Dark Night of the Soul is a book I recommend. But down deep, we're transcendental. Just like our old friend when we chant, mm. it's, a, it's a comfort, it's, it's a continuum, but it's a chance for us to go within and everything else disappears just like when you're in the zone in Hatha Yoga or art. Time disappears. You're totally into it. And that was Prabhupada. He was 100% present with us. So I got to see all the moods. And he took me everywhere. And as Samashinda says, we had fun. He wouldn't let a joke go by. That is a beautiful... Um... It's a beautiful remembrance of Prabhupada. It's such a personal, uh, a personal touch that we don't hear so much about. And these stories actually, we need to hear these. We need to hear Prabhupada as the person, as the friend as well. And you have these. It's like a, it's like a treasure. And I want to thank you for sharing them. I, I also want to, I know we have limited time. We have 15 minutes and uh, there's a lot of questions I have 
that I'd like to pick your brain because again, you're the one of the few people that could even share these things. Like how did Prabhupada relate in those small circumstances when not only was Prabhupada the, one of the big spiritual influencers, but in the, in the material world, there was letting many material influencers in that circle at that time, like you're mentioning Jerry Garcia and Ken Kesey, who I think was the manager of the Grateful Dead. Did Prabhupada have interactions with the Grateful Dead? Uh, just at the Montreal Rock dance, we decided we were going to, we all knew. I, someone gave me, someone was painting a portrait of me in Mexico. Hmm. And the payment was 10 pesos and a puppy <laughs> if I wanted it. And so I actually hitchhiked across the United States with two girls and two dogs. We would hide behind the bushes and the girls would put their thumb out. And then we'd, at any rate, <laughs> it's in a book I wrote, Love, Medicine, and Music. It's how I came to Krishna consciousness. So... At the Mon we decided to have a mantra rock dance with Allen Ginsberg as the MC2. Tim Leary was there, a guy who thought he was the mayor of San Francisco with a sash. And the Grateful Dead was one of the bands. So they were favorable because we lived right across the street from the Grateful Dead. And mm. Sudama Swami lived with them. Wow. So there was this <laughs> interaction, but Prabhupada never met them face to face but everyone he met he would see he had a way of listening you see and mm. then finding the common ground with everybody this is a trick for krishna conscious we all have more things in common than separate us find the harmonious things mm. including spirituality differences mm. sangha differences we're all wanting to do the same thing sincerely. Let's get together instead of the separations. So he would do that. Um, and I, and you can pick my brain because I do it all over the world. And people's idea of Krishna consciousness changes because I want them to see the lovable, compassionate, humorous, open-minded, adventurous, thinking out of the box that you never know what he was going to do it. Once we got down the foundation, Raghunath and Vairagra Bhakti, you get the foundation, the rules and regulations. Then he told me, then it becomes spontaneous. Nava mm. Yovana, ever fresh, Krishna consciousness. Even though we're doing similar things every day, it can be ever fresh. And that's what he brought to us. Now we have a short amount of time and, and, and I do want you to pick my brain and we can maybe do another one, but I do want to address something else. Sure. As we evolved and there are many devotees who have given their life, like myself, 54 years, 40 years, 30 years, 10 years, there is nothing to help them when they get old and in need of care. And some people I heard about were even expelled from temples when they got old after giving service. And if they're not the great Gurudas, if they're working in the kitchen, they're unsung heroes, women mm -hmm. too, unsung heroes, this hidden minority, they needed care. So I started an organization called Vedic Care Charitable Trust. And there's four aspects to it. One is something that can be done in every temple of the world. Outreach. You, mm. you identify someone in need in your area and with a little petrol, gas in your car and some compassion, you can assist people in their homes and hospitals. Sometimes the family might not be Vashnavas. We have MP3 so they can hear Prabhupada and the kirtans and bhajans in their ear instead of television and having to eat meat. Uh, so the second part is uh, assisted living Krishna conscious style. Mm. 
not just looking at the world waiting to die, care time, telling your stories, still serving, even if you can't walk. So this outreach, which can be done every place, very simply, very inexpensively. Then there's assisted living. Then there's hospice, which is not in the same building as the assisted living. Self-subsistent gardens, everything like that. Hatha yoga. Uh, Bhakta arts, healing practices, support groups, men, women, marriages, and kirtan healing, drama healing, etc. And then hospice, and then shraddha, the transition. So we have these services, but we need help. Uh, there's people all over the world that are embracing this. We're working with Bhaktivedanta Hospital in Vrindavan. The uh, website is VedicCareCharity.org. VedicCareCharity.org. Okay, great. Well, we don't have so much time, um, about eight minutes left. And I want to ask you a question that a lot of our a lot of our listeners like, but um, you know we hear so much about George Harrison and how connected George Harrison was. You're one of these people that you were one of the very few people who met the Beatles and cultivated the Beatles in their bhakti. And you hear a lot about George. I'd like to know about John, Paul, Ringo. What was their relationship with Krishna, with mantras, with uh, did you did you spend time with them as well? Were they were they yes. weirded out by it? Did they embrace it? Great question. What a great question. <clears throat> and I can talk about George. What a great soul. Okay. So John and I had a relationship. First of all, I st he was doing macrobiotic diet and I tried it when I was searching. And uh, our whole idea was we're going to give to the Beatles. We're not going to take anything. Mm. And that's what we were doing. So John said to me, Guru Das, my friends are just wanting things from me now that I'm rich and everything. And mm. I said, your real friends will just give to you, John. And he said, like you, Guru Das? Oh, isn't that <laughs> nice? So I said, your friends are like a chain. And now you're tightening the chain and polishing the chain. It's time to break the chain. Another time, John trundles in to the Apple offices and he says, Gurudas, I'm going to give peace a chance. I'm going to let my hair grow. Chaitra Guru enters my intelligence. John, if you really want to impress people, do some sacrifice. Cut your hair off like me. Then I know you're serious. The next week, I'm walking down Fleet Street, and I see a picture of John and Yoko, not shaved, but crew cuts all the way huh. down. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they were chipping heroin. That means not in the vein, but in the skin. So they were reclusive, but our interactions were really great. He had a music room with every kind of instrument, uh, Paul, I would have liked to know because he was our engineer in one of the photos. This book behind me is the, the Swami Who Rocked the World. It's a new photo book. Amazon voted it number one. And there's a picture of Sir Paul in the engineering booth. But next to him is Linda Eastman. And she went to high school with me in Scarsdale which is a what? rich town, it's a rich town. And so I go there and I said, we went to school together. And she said, no, a monk wouldn't live from Scarsdale. I said, why not? Krishna owns Scarsdale too. <laughs> anyway, she told me about her vegetarian ideas. We became friends. She... So we didn't get to know him, but Ringo, was lovely. He was he was the real musician. When they first started out, he actually had gigs and had a car. And they <laughs> didn't. But he he just loved 
he was loving things and he loved, they all loved Krishna consciousness because George and John chanted for three days. They had the happening album and they were chanting before we met them. And they chanted mm. for three days on a trip. So Ringo asked me, Guru Das, can I come back as a cat? And I said, <laughs> why? He says, I like cats. <laughs> so I said, well, okay, but the difference between humans and cats is that we can ask who am I and things like that. He was lovely. Mm -hmm. So we had very nice, they respected us. And they embraced it because we fed them. Uh, and we lived with John, George. We went with six and a baby. And now there's 36 devotees. Where are you going to live? And so George suggested we live with John. And you so all live with was, John. <laughs> yes. And but we were going to help with the grounds and do everything like that. So it was a symbiotic relationship. Nice. Oh, um, all right. Well, so the so the new book is it's a uh, it's a photo book. The Swami yes, Who Rocked three. the World's photogra Photographical Essays of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami uh, by Guru Das. You want to share a little bit about that? Yes, because actually, if I didn't do those, render those photos, this would have all been forgotten. And I also, also I did taping, but sure. it's the very beginning and early from 1967 on. And so it's not only iconic photos, but it shows this history and history. We don't want to forget women of mm. our Krishna conscious movement. It mm. evolves, but the back to God had masthead photos in there. There's some photos that are classics, the peaceful photo in Amsterdam with texts. So you get an idea of my style of speaking and writing and storytelling. And so it's a combination of 207, eight pages, and photos and texts and graphics. And Amazon voted it number one. And it's also available in Kindle and an Apple version with links. So you can see Prabhupada playing the harmonium and then you hear him singing and me telling stories about George and everything with links and a an, and talk between Prabhupada and a television interviewer. So the Apple version has, has links and even some more photo galleries. I did a series of photos, but we couldn't fit them in the other book. So the link is uh, another version, but it's a great book. It's getting great reception and it's available on Amazon. Wow. Okay. So the first book, Love, Medicine and Music. Um, no, the first, that, first that was book your... is by, by His Example, which is a really good book. It's okay. about Prabhupada. The second book, Love, Medicine, and Music, is I had a great life. I've been blessed. I met so many famous people. So before I met Prabhupada, I was in the civil rights movement. And I met all the mentors. And compared to all the mentors, uh, Prabhupada was greater than them. Wow. So that's a great book. Love, medicine, and music. It's it's a different type of writing. It's to the world to show if he can do it, I can do it. Because I was kind of wild. So uh, now I'm wild for Krishna. <laughs> well, thank you and very much. There's, a, there's a poetry book called Endless Beginnings, too. Okay. And the new book, The Swami Who Rocked the World. Rocked the Worlds with his oh. S. Rock the Worlds, Photographical yeah. Essays of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami by Guru Das. Guru das Prabhu, thank you so much for joining us. And can you mention the web address of your charity again? VedicCareCharity.org, small letters. Thank Vedic you. org. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for just sharing your experiences. These are like most treasured. And we will like, like cherish these stories 
you are like a, a walking history book of the origins of bhakti in the United States and throughout the world uh, that is sort of sealed off sort of to the rest of us. So we're honored that you're on our show sharing these with us. I'm honored to have you in my life. And um, just thanks uh, for being part of this community. And we would love to have you back. And uh, I want everybody to go to Amazon right now. Check out this book. Click on that link we put up in the chat board or just looked up the Swami who rocked the world's um, uh, fo photo essays. And these are incredible photos as well. This is like not I mean, it's amazing how all this stuff was captured on film, on audio. And the fact that you were there uh, alongside it, uh, documenting this for eternity, it's quite amazing. Thank you for joining us, Guru Das Prabhu. Really honored. I love you, my brother. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, we feel the same way. Thanks for everybody for joining us here on Wisdom of the Sages. If you're listening to this on Facebook, we do this every day. Study of the Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Sunday is our interview day. Saturday is our Q&A day. We have a day off tomorrow. We're back on Tuesday at 6 a.m. Um, New York time. And if you want to join us live, you can join us live on Zoom. It's even more fun. Email Mara, wisdom of the sages 108 at gmail.com. Make sure you check out all our website for all our events coming up, wisdom of the sages.com. And if you like what we're doing, hey, buy us a latte, so to speak. Uh, the, for the cost of a latte, you can make a Patreon contribution. It keeps this boat floating. Any uh, contribution of your choice is welcome. Patreon.com slash Wisdom of the Sages is how we keep going. The podcast has become a full-time commitment, and we're happy to do it. And I want to thank this community for growing and uh, supporting us as we support each other through changing times. Thanks, everybody. I got a split early today. Gurdas Prabhu. Haribo. Jai, Haribo.